back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number six from the October 2022 International A-Level Mechanics M1 exam. And this question here is all about vectors. So we're told in this question that there's a particle A of mass 0 0.5 kilograms at rest on a smooth horizontal plane. At time t equals zero, two forces F1 and F2 where F1 is minus 3i plus 2j newtons, and F2 is pi plus qj newtons, where p and q are constants, are applied to A. Given that A moves in the direction of the vector i minus 2j, show that 2p plus q minus 4 equals 0. All right, so now we're told that basically when these two forces are applied to this object, then it moves in this direction. So these are the forces that are being applied on the object, and this is the direction in which it's going to move. So what we can say is that the resultant of these two forces, F1 plus F2, okay, is going to be in this direction, which is K1 minus 2. Okay, so the direction of this vector, so the direction is 1 minus 2, so the, the, the force that's acting in this direction will be some constant times 1 minus 2. Okay, so what we can then say from this is F1, which is minus 3, 2 plus F2, which is, in fact, I'll write that down here, I have minus 3, 2, plus F2, which is PQ, which we don't know the values of, is equal to K times 1 minus 2. Okay, so we can, from that, we can set up a pair of equations, one from the I components. If we look at the I components, I <coughs> have minus 3 plus P equals 1 times K, which is K. And if we look at the J components, we're going to have 2 plus q is equal to minus 2k. So we have two equations here, and we want to end up with an equation with just p and q and no k in it. So we can use some sort of substitution if you want. We can say, okay, we know that k is equal to minus 3 plus p. So I can say k is equal to minus 3 plus p. So we can substitute that into this equation. So you have 2 plus q equals minus 2 times minus 3 plus p. We could do that. We could have also made the, the coefficients of this the same and then added the two equations, but both of those ways are perfectly fine. So I've got 2 plus q is equal to 6 plus p. So we want to show this, okay? 6, sorry, 6 plus 2p. 6 minus 2p, what am I doing? Please excuse me for that. That's minus 2 times minus 6 and minus 2 times plus p, which is minus 2p. All right, now, we want to show that this becomes like that. So the p and the q both have to be on this left side with the p positive. So you add 2p to both sides. So 2p plus q, and you have 2 minus 6, which is minus 4, equals 0. And that's exactly what we had to show. You have to show it exactly in the same way, write it exactly the same as this. Don't leave things all over the place. Um, you know, you want to make it so that it's exactly as they ask you to show. So 2p plus q minus 4 equals 0. So we just use some substitution there. But the key here is to understand that the resultant of the two forces is not this. This is not the resultant. This is the same direction of the resultant. So it's going to be some m multiple of this vector. All right, so that's, that's the important thing here. Then part B says, given that P equals 5, find the speed of A at the time T equals 4 seconds. So we need to find the speed of P. Sorry, the speed of A. So we know that the speed, we can, we can think of the SUVAT equations. And let's see what we have from SUVAT. Okay, this, this might help, help us here. So... Uh, we know the initial speed was zero because it says it said it's, that's, uh, it's at rest. V is what I'm, I need to find to find the speed. Okay, this is the final velocity. The acceleration I can try to find. Okay, um, I know the acceleration is the force divided by the mass, you could say, right? Because F equals MA. And I know the force and I know the mass. So I can find the acceleration and the time. The time is four seconds. So the key now is to find the acceleration. Acceleration. So I know that the, the resultant force is the mass times the acceleration. And I know the mass is 0 0.5 K. 
kilograms. So now what I can do is I can find the resultant force. The resultant force, as we said, was K times, and we had K times 1 minus 2. Okay, K times 1 minus 2. So we need to find the value of K, right? So we know that P equals 5, okay? So we know that P equals 5. And if we look back here, we can say that minus 3 plus P equals K. So we have minus 3 plus P equals K. So we can say that minus 3 plus 5 equals K. So K is equal to 2. That means the resultant force is therefore 2 times 1 minus 2. So the resultant force is, is 2 and minus 4. Okay, so we can say the resultant force is 2 minus 4. So now we know that the resultant force is equal to the mass times acceleration. So the acceleration is going to be, um, so let's just write that out as we have it. We have the resultant force, okay, is 2 minus 4. That's equal to the mass, which is a half times the acceleration, okay, um, which is what I want to find. So I'll call that A. Okay, so therefore we can say A is equal to 2 times uh, 2 minus 4, which is 4, and minus 8. So that's the acceleration. So we know the acceleration is 4 minus 8. So now I can find what my uh, speed is. I can use V equals U plus AT. So V equals 0, 0 plus 4, which is the time times 4 minus 8. So the final velocity is equal to 16 and minus 32. Right now, they want us to find the speed. This is the velocity. And if you do not find the speed and you leave it as velocity, then you will lose a mark for sure. You want to find the magnitude of the speed, which is the square root of 16 squared plus 32 squared. So we have to take that in our calculator and we write down well, that is the square root of 16 squared plus 32 squared, which gives us 16 times root 5. 16 times root 5 meters per second. We could, um, if you want to, write it in 3SF, 35.8. You can say, or 35.8 meters per second. Both of those should be acceptable as our answers. I either you can write it in exact form or 3SF, it doesn't state. So there's the answer to this question, uh, question number six. Okay, so these were the forces acting on the particle. That was the direction it was moving in, so the resultant force must be also in that direction. So the resultant force is some constant times that direction, and that's how we found P and Q. We found this equation, and then we wanted to find the speed of the particle after four seconds, so we needed its acceleration. To find its acceleration, we need to find the value of k. So we could use the fact that they told us what p was to find what k is, and then we know the force. If we know the force, we know the acceleration. If we know the acceleration, we can use the SUVAT equations to find the final velocity. And the final velocity is not the answer. We want the speed. So we have to find its magnitude. So all those steps are very important for us in answering this question. Um, other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region here. Other questions from vectors in general in the playlist that will appear over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link in the middle. Thank you for watching and see you soon.